Hi everyone and welcome to another Linfield Coaches Catch Chat for the Linfield Football Program. Joe Stewart here with you with head football coach Joe Smith. Coach, how you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you as always. So uh, another great win for you last Saturday up in Tacoma uh, at PLU, uh, 52 to 7. It seems to be a regular type of score for you guys these days. Uh, but I want to start today talking about special teams. Uh, we're a place where you guys looked really good on Saturday, but have been really good all year long. You got your first special teams touchdown of the year uh, with McLean Stone King taking one of the house, and just overall have been really effective. Paul Thigh has been effective in that role too. Uh, you guys as a collective are averaging 19 yards on kick returns, nine on punt returns and then Andy Starkle and Colin Ramos have been fantastic kicking the ball and you getting you great uh, put it in great spots for you guys uh, defensively limiting field position for the other team why do you think you guys have been so effective in that particular phase of the game this year I think it always starts with personnel I mean you you need to have good players to, to have good execution so I think uh, you know they've done a good job of of taking pride in what they're doing and coach Funk's done a wonderful job with the schematics as well as the fundamentals and in, in kicking and snapping and holding all those hidden things that you don't see and I'm very proud of that especially with some of the um, the variation of who's available from week to week that we've gone through the last three weeks so uh, we've had to rotate a lot of different guys and play a lot of different guys and yet they've still um, performed and I think that's the mark of a good team if you have guys that can step up when their number's called and and guys have been doing that. So they've taken pride in their role and they've, they've done it to the best of their ability. Defensively is another place where you guys just continue to dominate. Really, let's be honest, you've been quite dominant in all three phases of the game. But talking defensively, you guys have uh, allowed opponents to score more than 20, 10 points in a game just twice of your six games this year. Uh, what do you think it's, has led to, again, I mean, again, I know just great personnel and everybody stepping up, but why do you think this team has been uh, so strong defensively this season? Well, again, I think it starts with personnel and and then it starts with, you know, schemes and executing those schemes. So, you know, if you have the right people and you prepare well, um, it's a great combination. And then it's just a matter of performance. You know, that's that's Coach Rutschman's three P's there, people, preparation, performance. And and, and our defense has a lot of very fine players on it, uh, but they're executing a system yeah. that I think is, is very advanced. And Coach Vaughn and Coach Rombach and Coach Funk have put their guys in positions to be very successful and taken teams uh, away from what they really want to do and gotten them into long yardage situations. And if you get into long yardage situations against our defensive front, that's that's been a recipe for disaster. And, and that's sort of what's happened. So I think winning first down is every defense's uh, priority, but it's particularly uh, devastating against you know this defensive front if, if you get behind the chains. You did just lose one of your impact players on defense, unfortunately, Tyler Bergeron out with injury now. Uh, but it seems like guys are stepping up. Cutter Hillock did a good job uh, on uh, Saturday. And overall, the defense played very well still without him. Three interceptions. Uh, what is losing him uh, doing to this team, but also at the same time, uh, what kind of things have you seen from just everybody else stepping up around him? Well, I think adversity is is can be a real blessing to a team, as, as strange as that sounds. Um, you know, this one was particularly hard for all of us. You know, emotionally, it was a, a big loss. Yeah. You know, Tyler's such a tremendous uh, captain on the whole team, and and I think his his leadership and in, in terms of his gamesmanship, uh, making calls, making adjustments, that's really a a monumental loss for us, and so. You know, collectively, a lot of guys have had to step up uh, to share that load from the linebacking core to Ben Baxter to a bunch of other guys, Tyler Sitton having to, John Setti having to take on more, you know, as seniors and, and collectively maybe make some of the calls that Tyler was always doing for them. So uh, a lot of hidden things that, that we lost, but I think collectively maybe it forces everybody to, to rise to a different level. I think of when we lost Ray Lyons, you know, back in, in 03, it's a very similar situation for us. Yeah, uh, but still ended up turning out to be a pretty darn good team for you guys that year and of course went on to win the national championship the following year. Uh, but let's sw uh, switch to an offensive gear now. Um, you guys were slowed down for really the first time all season there for a little stretch there. You scored early in the second quarter but then not able to get back on the board offensively again until the fourth. It looked like for the first time an opposing defense had started to figure some things out against you. What did you see uh, during that little bit of a challenging stretch and how were you guys able to break out of it and get the wheels turning again uh, in the fourth quarter? Yeah, it's interesting, you know, how games go. You're 
you know, offense is so much like a like a baseball hitter in terms of you know each at bat, and and so you don't have to be good every series, but you, you'd like to be good one out of three or have a great day two out of three. And so I think we scored on our first five series, but then we, you know, I, I think maybe got a little complacent possibly, but I I think you know in, in the real simple matter, you know, they were able to pressure the quarterback a yeah. little bit, and we got behind the chains a little bit, and and again with some reshuffling of the offensive line, I think that. We had some execution issues in terms of assignments and, and calls, as well as just got beat a little bit. And and uh, PLU, they they're scrappy. They played hard, and and I think they had um, you know thing, few things go their way in, in those series. But um, you know, so we we really sputtered on about three in a row, and one was a two minute. But um, it was good to see our guys bounce through that. In fact, I really liked that we yeah. had you know a Lowell we haven't had one so yeah, it was it was good for us to to have a little failure if if you know scoring that many points is a failure I'll, I'll take <laughs> I'll take that every day so um you know I was pleased with how the guys bounced back and you know our running backs had a really good day up there I thought they were they were quite dominant in their play and and um you know we we, we enjoyed the, the challenge yeah, and I want to talk about those running backs a little bit. I mean, you guys were held to a season low through the air, but still just as good as ever, if not better, on the ground. Connor Morton had a great day carrying the ball. Connor McNabb continues to lead the team in touchdowns. Uh, between the two of them, we've talked about their dynamic, uh, their dynamic ability to both run and catch both of them. But what has this team been able to do running the game, uh, running the ball with those two? Um, why has it been so effective? Because it doesn't just seem like those two, because when you get the younger guys in there or the guys further down the depth chart, they've been producing as well. Those yards per carries are looking good for everybody. Even Wyatt has found some good mobility uh, this year running the ball. Um, the running game really seems to be coming together here right now. Uh, how does it help you uh, keep that passing game going at the same time? And uh, was it a did you feel like at, when the offense was starting to sputter that it was a good fallback option uh, for you guys uh, against PLU? I think that's fair to say the you know a defense can really take away try to load up I should say on on one phase and so some of the um, you know honestly we, we were trying to probably do some things that that weren't great and and just got back to some of oh, fine we'll just we'll just run the football and, and open some stuff up again so I think it's very important to to have balance on offense if you don't you end up seeing you know exotic you know pass uh, defenses that that really aren't conducive to throw against and you, you really need to run against. And so, um, you know, I think that's that's something we have to have is that balance. And as far as why are we doing it better, I, I think it goes hand in hand with, with the offensive line. If they play well, our offense does great. If they play average, we're going to play average. And I think that's pretty much for most teams. But with the amount of weapons we have on this offense, you know, our O-line is, is really critical. Do you see that becoming even more of a key this Saturday against a tough, gritty, defensive-focused team with George Fox? I mean, you know, the last time you guys faced him back in 2019, uh, it was a high-powered offense for you guys, but they were able to hold you to 24 points and stay right in it the whole time. Uh, I assume that's the type of battle they're looking for this Saturday. The line of scrimmage is going to be a big place, I imagine, for uh, who determines uh, getting the win in that one. I would agree with that. The um, the, the score is not going to be high scoring, you know. I, I just think, you know, George Fox tries to shorten the game, and you know they're 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 not going to score many points because of that. They don't get a whole lot of plays off, etc. So, you know, it should be a much lower scoring game just because of the opportunities. You know, you have less at bats, so to speak. So, I think that'll be pivotal to to make the most of each series, and and the the team that's able to control the line of scrimmage will will definitely uh, probably come out on top. That's this Saturday right here at the Cat Dome, and we'll, of course, have live coverage for you on the Linfield Sports Network. Kickoff at 1.30, Farm Electric pregame show starts at 1 o'clock before the Wildcats and the Bruins do battle here at McMinnville. Coach, thanks for the time. Thank you.